If you believe you have any information pertaining to this case, you are urged to contact the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation at 580-298-5525 or at dale.birchfield at osbi.ok.gov. Alternatively, you may instead contact the Sequoia County Sheriff's Office on 918-775-1214. Or you could contact the Oklahoma Office of the Chief Medical Examiner on 918-295-3400. This video features discussions of homicide, bodily mutilation, sexual and physical assault, and other topics some may find upsetting. Viewer discretion is advised. At around 6pm on the 23rd of October 1994, a set of badly decomposed human remains were located by a couple collecting pecans in a wooded area approximately 30 feet off the intersection of rural Highway 64D and Interstate 40 in Sequoia County, Oklahoma. This is close to the Oklahoma-Arkansas border and about two miles south of Dora in Crawford County, Arkansas. When police arrived on the scene, they found the body had been wrapped in black landscaping plastic, which was tied with either baling twine or rope. It appeared as though the surrounding brush, which had since dried out and turned brown, had been manually cut with a sharp object and laid over the body in an attempt to further conceal it. The body was missing its head and arms. After further investigation, the head was discovered around 8 to 15 feet away, and some bones from the arms were found in a patch of weeds nearby. The medical examiner determined the partially skeletonized remains belonged to a woman who had been dead for roughly two weeks to six months prior to discovery. She could have been lying at her site of discovery for between two weeks to a month before being found. Her heart and left lung had been removed, leaving a gaping hole in her chest measuring about five by eight inches. Early reports state this cavity had, quote, been entered, likely by scavenging animals. She'd also been bound at the ankles with a cord threaded through a wooden ring similar to a drapery ring. The ME also found that her head didn't appear to have been intentionally severed. Instead, it, quote, may have been removed by animals, unquote. Though a cause of death was unable to be ascertained, this is thought to be a homicide. The woman's race is uncertain. She may have been of white Caucasian, Asian, indigenous, or mixed descent. She was estimated to be between 35 and 50 years old at the time of her death. At 5 feet 1 inch to 5 feet 6 inches tall, she weighed somewhere between 100 and 125 pounds. Her naturally dark brown hair, which was cut short in a crew cut style, was greying. Her dental work was extensive and of professional quality. This included a restoration, a bridge and several crowns. No clothing was found on or near the body. Some time after news of her death circulated, witnesses came forward to claim they'd seen something suspicious occurring along the highway beside which her body was located. The witnesses said that between 4 and 4.30pm 4 on the 5th of October 1994, that's 19 days before the body was discovered, they saw a white male dragging an object wrapped in black plastic into the woods near where the body would later be found. The witnesses described this man as being about six feet tall and having a slender build, as well as dark brown hair and a moustache. He reportedly drove a blue SUV with an Arkansas license plate, possibly a Ford Bronco or a 1990s model Chevrolet Blazer. This individual is considered a person of interest and is wanted for questioning, 
though little else is known of him. Though a composite sketch of this man was reportedly created and released shortly after the body was found, I've been unable to locate anything of the sort. After efforts to identify her were exhausted, the deceased woman was eventually buried as Jane Doe in the Roadland Cemetery in Sequoia County. Her headstone reads as follows. Dora Jane Doe, found near Dora, Arkansas, October 24th, 1994. In early January 2010, some DNA was extracted from Jane Doe's hair samples, though a full profile was unable to be attained. Just over a week later, an order to exhume her remains was issued, though it's currently uncertain as to whether or not this exhumation actually took place. The last publicly available information regarding this came in August 2013, when Joshua David Brown, writing for the website Hub Pages, reported state officials were, after three and a half years, still waiting for the exhumation date to be set. Another three and a half years later, in January 2017, it was reported by Dora Justice of the Fort Smith Justice Organisation that the exhumation still hadn't taken place and the case had been, quote, swept under the rug. A journalist writing for Inside Fort Smith in May 2017 stated that, at the time of writing, the Sequoia County Sheriff's Office was yet to return their calls pertaining to this matter. There is some speculation, and I'd like to emphasise this is just speculation, that Dora Doe's case could potentially be linked to the case of Ruth Henderson. In July 1995, Henderson was found violently raped and murdered in her home just outside Fort Smith, Arkansas. Inside her left ear canal, OSBI agents discovered a piece of bodily tissue. Examinations at the Arkansas State Police Lab revealed that this was, in fact, human lung tissue that did not belong to Henderson. If you recall, Dora Doe was missing her left lung. It has been theorised that the lung tissue found lodged within Henderson's ear may have belonged to Dora Doe, though as far as I can tell this theory is still unconfirmed. Thankfully, Henderson's killer has been caught. In March 2001, an Arkansas man named Charles Ray Vines was convicted of capital murder, residential burglary and rape, and sentenced to three life sentences. In autumn 2019, Vines died in prison of, quote, natural causes at the age of 54. In the years leading up to his death, letters were written to Vines concerning the case of Dora Doe, but as far as has been reported, he never responded. Though an alleged suspect in several other murders, Vines was only ever convicted of two, that of Juanita Wofford in 1993, and of course Ruth Henderson in 1995. He was also found guilty of the rape and physical assault of a publicly unnamed 16-year-old girl, which he committed in the year 2000. It was this incident that led to his arrest, as the girl's stepfather arrived home during the attack and caught Vines in the act. When looking at the available pictures of Vines, I noted he had dark brown hair and wore a moustache. Just like the man witnesses quite possibly saw dumping Dora Doe's body along the highway. Unfortunately, I was unable to locate any information regarding Vince's height, nor any about the vehicle he drove. It's known that Vines, quote, preferred older women. Indeed, both his known murder victims have been described as elderly. Dora Doe's age estimate is 35 to 50, which isn't elderly by any means, but it's not particularly young either, especially when you consider the fact that most sources put her at the upper end of that estimate. However, given the fact he's known to have attacked a 16-year-old, I don't think we should discount the theory of Vines being involved in Dora Doe's case based on her age alone. 
The detail about the unidentified lung tissue found lodged in Henderson's ear really does make me wonder. I should hope the police question Vines about Dorado's case before his death, given he was active in the Arkansas area at the time of her murder, though if they didn't I can't say I'd be particularly surprised. In any case, this hypothesis is something to ponder, if nothing else. Despite the lack of any new leads, the case of Dora Doe is still open, and the OSBI are actively appealing for people with information to come forward. After almost 30 years, this woman remains nameless, as does whoever robbed her of her life and brutally mutilated her body before tossing her aside along the edge of the road. But over the years, several missing people have been ruled out as potential matches. Please check the description of this video for a list of these rule outs. Again, if you believe you have any information pertaining to this case, you are urged to contact one of the following. The Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation at 580-298-5525 or at dale.birchfield at osbi.ok.gov or the Sequoia County Sheriff's Office on 918-775-1214 or finally the Oklahoma Office of the Chief Medical Examiner on 918-295-3400 Thank you very much for giving Dora Doe's case a moment of your day.